Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Sonal Bhutra. With me, as always, is Vivek Iyer. Well, we are at that juncture where Nifty is falling a little bit more, but uh, with, with it's quite flat with some negative bias. So, 24 points lower on the Nifty right now. That's been the case for a while. Quite volatile today. But what's doing well is the Midcap side of things. So that index is up around 423 points. Bank Nifty, that is the one which is lower in trade. 242 points. Uh, cut off there so that is a big uh, loser in trade today but a lot of broader market movers and that is something we'll discuss in greater detail fmcg autos banking index consumption index all of them lower in trade today so we'll discuss that but power finance that is the uh, stock in focus on the back of its fourth quarter numbers the revenue is up 20 percent and the net profit also rises 18 percent on a yearly basis in fact my colleague abhishek kothari spoke to parminder chopra the chairman and managing director of the company and began by asking her about the implications of RBI's draft paper on provisions for power projects. Let's listen into that conversation. See, I think uh, that RBI has always been focusing on prudence while uh, talking of the project financing. So if I talk about the concerns on the PFC's accounts, so you would be knowing that we are following India's accounting standard and not the ICAP. We have already switched over to that. So in NDS, the RBI has clear cut uh, directed that any difference between the ECL and the IREC has to go to as impairment reserve. So first of all, I would like to say that on the front of affecting the profitability, we don't foresee any impact on the profits of the company as this is going to be as an impairment reserve. The second part, yes, I agree that that is going to adversely impact on the capital adequacy as well as on the loan growth. But you know that PFC, while declaring the results, have we have also shared the capital adequacy above 25%. And that to tier one capital, around 20%, 20, 23%, as against the RBI norms for 10% as the minimum tier capital. We don't foresee that this is going to have a major impact on PFC, either on the front of maintaining the capital adequacy or on the loan growth. There is another reason that when we analyzed our portfolio, that 25% of our total portfolio is the projects under implementation. Out of this 25%, around 45% is the projects under generation, where we have a longer tenor and could be there could be uh, impact of the extension in DCCO, which RBI is talking of having the additional provisioning of 5%. So on overall basis, this is not going to have much impact. And the details are yet to be, these are being examined. And I think the details will be worked out when more clarity on these guidelines or the final uh, guidelines come out. Well, yes, this is a draft consultation yes. that they have put out. Uh, will this cause slowdown in the, uh, you know, uh, fresh capex that is being built up in the power sector? There could be some effect, but as far as I know that from the PFC's point of view, we are, we are having sufficient cushion on the capital adequacy front. And our focus is on the distribution sector and the renewable sector. Renewable, which has a comparatively smaller gestation period, as you know, and the distribution sector, where most of the loans as of now are backed by the government guarantees. So we are not foreseeing much impact on those lines. How are the discounts dues uh, shaping up as of now? After implementation of the LPS, you know that there has been a, a tremendous uh, improvement in the liquidity across the system. If we talk that uh, before introduction of the LPS, there was outstanding dues of 1,39,000 crore of the various GENCOs towards the DISCOM. That has diluted to the extent of 73%. So only a minuscule portion is left. Apart from that, uh, uh, the current dues, if we talk, after the introduction of the LPS, around 9 lakh crore billing has been done by the GENCOs to the DISCOMs. And I'm happy to share that we have not seen any major defaults in that. So the liquidity across the value chain in the power sector is improving a lot. On the dues of the DISCOM sector towards, if you ask about the lenders like PFC, so we are not facing any issue 
in realizing our dues from the DISCOM still now. Will this draft regulation, if implemented, uh, that will increase the cost uh, for power industry as a whole and if the norms comes into effect? There will definitely be some impact, but how far it is going to be impacted, it all depends on the market dynamics. We are talking of 5% provisioning and in case that goes beyond two years, maybe another 2.5% provisioning over the life of the loan. When we disperse, definitely it's going to have immediate impact, but that provisioning, since it, these are the long-term financing which we are providing, so we are not seeing much maybe except for the few initial years. Well, last time you guided us for a 12 to 15 percent growth for FI24 with respect to the AM growth and bang on, it's been at 14 percent. How do you see the trend in AM growth going ahead? Which segment will drive like thermal, green energy, etc.? Growth, uh, uh, I'm happy that we have been able to achieve the targeted growth, which we were saying that it, it's going to be somewhere between 12 to 15, as you rightly said. And we want, uh, we expecting that we will continue on the similar levels of growth going forward, at least for the next financial year. About the segment, if you are asking me, then the segment, primarily it could be the distribution, where the focus is on lending towards our BPF scheme. Apart from that, we have, uh, we will, we are going to have focus on the renewable. But we can't leave the thermal also because till the time that uh, a stable renewable system is found in place with the proper storage for through either through battery or through pump storage, the coal is going to uh, act as a backup and provide us the energy security. So from that, some disbursements are also going to go towards thermal also. Well, renewable has been your focus area over the last few quarters and this time around you have seen that AM growth of 25% in that uh, particular book. Now, what I observed in your uh, AM growth over the last few quarters, you are reducing your dependency on straight or government, uh, you know, uh, book. Uh, that book share as a percentage of AM has reduced from 84% uh, to right now about 81% odd. So is there a conscious effort to, you know, increase the share of uh, private in your overall AM or would you like to maintain a share of let's say 80-20? See, for that you need to understand the dynamics of power sector. In the power sector, DISCOM is primarily with the state government and if we talk of the renewable where we are finding the growth to happen, that is predominantly is most of that is the private sector. So we are growing our private sector business through funding for the renewable primarily. For the DISCOMs, all disbursements are being done in the state sector. So we are not finding that there is going to be a much shift in our portfolio, 84 to 81 percent. I don't think that that's a really a big change for changing in the portfolio. You just noticed a trend of change. Yes, definitely. Going forward, when we lend more and more to the renewable sector, that is going to add to the private sector portfolio. How do you see your net interest margin and spreads in the coming quarters? Now, they have largely been flattish over the last one year. So do you see them improving in the coming quarters? And uh, what is your uh, comment on cost of funds going ahead? We have always guided the investors that our spreads are going to remain within the range bound somewhere between 2.5 to 2.75. And similarly, margins somewhere around 3 to 3.5. The only difference what could make is that the time, at the time, what is the cost of funds, one, and how leveraged is our book. So where you will find that the changing of the numbers. So market dynamics, you know that we have reduced our cost of borrowing from the previous year, which has led to in improvement in the spread as well as in the margin. So what we are finding that uh, we are going to continue with a similar trend and we will are going to be range bound on these two fronts. So AM growth continuing at 15% range? I will again say from 12% to 15% somewhere that, that way.
Well, some very important commentary coming in from PFC there, especially some clarification regarding the impact of the RBI draft circular. But let's now slip into a short break. When we return, we'll be joined by Ruchit Jain of FiPesa.com to give us a technical check on the market. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Midcap Movers. Uh, you know, the only two segments of the market that are doing quite well is the mid-cap and the small-cap index managing to hold in the green, even as the rest of the market sees significant volatility. But this is a special segment, Midcap Movers, where Hormaz has been looking at the screen. Hormaz, quite a bit of volatility. I'm sure you had to change your stocks. Well, quite a bit of volatility, but then the broader markets are doing well, and I guess a lot of investors would be happy with that. And the mid-cap index, as you mentioned, continuing from where it left off yesterday. And even as the market, the benchmarks are not doing too well, the broader markets are in a league of their own. We start off with the mid-cap gainers in today's session and ITI is leading the pack there 11% higher now at the highest point of the day 320 there on ITI Century Textile, CG Power, Fact is up another 5% and BSE is starting to see a bit of a clawback after some, some bit of correction that the stock had seen 4.5% higher there as well. A lot of stocks that were mentioned in the MSCI rejig this morning and Suzlon, Zomato, Vedanta all of them have already part of the index but have seen an increase in weightage so they will see some bit of inflows coming in as well as a result there's the stocks are seeing a bit of reaction and pb fintech the inclusion in the msci india index is up four percent as well and some other stocks that are doing well in them and today's session are the psu banks is the top sectoral gainer but canara bank is trading x split so that is the reflection that the stock though is up four percent indian bank and union bank are also trading with gains of four percent each stocks that are doing well on the back of volumes and a lot of result reactions in this list as well obra realty is up four percent siemens opened lower had a sharp fall and then recovered equally swiftly seven percent higher there kc international there five and a half percent and thermax the entire capital good space is doing well today and that is up another eight percent as well in today's session and lastly some stocks that are bucking the trend in today's session there are the industries after the ubs initiation of with a sell rating there four and a half percent lower colgate after its earnings is down four and a half percent bosch is an inclusion in the msci but is down four percent and arcane chemicals is another four percent to round off the list of losers back to you guys with the numbers of jyoti labs okay all right jyoti labs good numbers uh, margins are higher 16 and a half percent versus 14.9 percent profit have also increased by 32 and a half percent that's been the fmcg story this time around right the stock has recovered from the lows uh, it was down around two odd percent now down one percent so we'll discuss that and a lot more but it's a good time to welcome ruchit jain of fivepesa.com for a technical check on the markets ruchit good afternoon thank you so much for joining us uh, what are the charts suggesting now do you think this mid cap outperformance could continue and nifty could consolidate at these levels yeah hi very good afternoon I think, yes, the downside in the index also seems to be very limited from here on. We have already seen that 1,000-point correction from 22,800 to uh, almost 21,800 we tested uh, a couple of days ago. But, you know, index have managed to show a good uh, support around that where the 100 EMA is also placed. So, we believe that the corrective phase, price-wise corrective phase is behind us now. Uh, until we see a breakdown below the 21,800 strong support, dips are likely to get bought into. And one can, you know, also look at the broader markets which have been doing quite well. So usually this is also a sign of a uh, continuation of the uptrend where the broader markets or stock specific action is quite positive. So I think the downside seems to be very limited from here on. 21,800 has formed a very strong support base. Any dip towards 22,100, 22,000 range in Nifty also, I think that would be a good opportunity to create fresh longs because the risk reward ratio has turned quite favorable to create uh, longs over here post this recent corrective phase. Good afternoon, Ruchit. Uh, so at this point of time, you know, what are you recommending? What are the individual stocks that you like? Yeah, hi, good afternoon. So we are looking at some stocks which are showing an outperformance in the corrective fair markets. In last 15-20 days, there have been some names which have not fallen, although you know, Nifty or the broader markets also witnessed some dip. And you know, NTPC is one of the stocks you know, where we are recommending to go in, uh, to take fresh long positions over here. Whatever corrections we witnessed of one or two weeks were more of a time-wise correction where the 40 days EMA acted as a good support for the stock. So one can go long on NTPC with stop loss below 350 for potential targets around 380 in the near term. And Astral Limited is looking quite positive over here. We have seen a breakout from its consolidation recently. And interestingly, uh, in last few months when it has seen a broad consolidation, wherever we have seen up moves, the up moves have been supported by good volumes. But we have not seen any volume-based sell-off whenever there are corrections. So I think this uptrend is likely to continue. So Estrel is one stock where you know, short-term traders can look to buy with stop loss below 2100 for potential targets around 2400. 
Thank you so much, uh, Richard, for your recommendations. Uh, but let's now slip into a short break. We'll get you more on the markets and stock-specific action on the other side. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Well, there's some more selling from the top for the Nifty. So 40 points lower on the Nifty right now. And mid-cap index also has come off from the highs. So we'll track that for you. But uh, some uh, specific movers that we, that we want to highlight. And Bharti Hexacom is one of them. Uh, the quarter four earnings came in steady. Brokerage firm Jefferies has issued a buy call on the stock and also has raised the target price. Reema Tendulkar is joining in with more details on this one. Reema, good numbers? Uh, yes, good numbers, steady numbers. And this is the first uh, set of numbers since the company listed in early April. April. And what a stock ride it's been. You know, the issue price was 570 and today it's even crossed the 900 rupee mark. Good numbers, 3.7% up on a quarter on quarter basis, year on year basis. Revenues are up 7.8%. Margins have expanded by 100 basis points to 48.9%. And the bottom line too has come in at 223 crore. The subscriber ad and the ARPU increase is fairly good. The average revenue per user has gone up by 2% on a quarter on quarter basis. As you pointed out, Jeffrey has been bullish on Bharti Hexacom. They continue to maintain that Bharti Hexacom is the best way to play the Indian telecom story and the fact that ARPUs are going to start increasing. They've raised the target price to 1200 Strong growth story unlocking, higher than estimated subscriber additions, ARPUs and incremental EBITDA positively surprised Jefferies. They've raised their EPS estimates by 9% and they reiterate Bharti Hexacom is the best way to invest in the improving telecom tariff story in India. Back to you. Thank you so much for that, Reema. From Telecom, let's now put the focus on the capital goods space. Uh, both ABB India and Siemens uh, have declared their quarterly results. Uh, Vamakshi is here to decode how earnings stacked up for both of the companies. Vamakshi, over to you. Well, absolutely. There's no doubt that both of these companies have posted a good set of numbers. Revenue for Siemens has grown by 18% and for ABB, it has grown by almost 28% on a year-on-year -year basis. But when we stack up this revenue as compared to the highest estimates on the street, uh, Siemens has missed this estimate by 1%, while ABB has uh, uh, come in above uh, the estimate of almost 2%. Uh, the net profit was a standout for most of these counters this time around. Uh, Siemens has reported a jump of 70%, while ABB has reported a jump of 88% in the net profit on a year-on-year -year basis. But as well, when we compare it to the highest uh, estimates on the street, uh, Siemens has managed to surpass it by almost 36.4%, while ABB has managed to surpass it by almost 24%. Uh, this uh, growth in profitability is largely being led by the improvement in margins. Uh, Siemens, historically in the last four quarters, had been reporting margins anywhere between the range of 12 to 13%, and this time around, it has managed to report margins of 15%. We're seeing a similar spike in ABB as well. They were reporting margins in the range of 12 to 16%, and this time around, they've managed to report 18.3% margins. But the question remains, is this sustainable? Now, ABB has highlighted that the improvement in margins was largely being led by higher share of exports and services, pricing benefit of low commodity costs, while Siemens has highlighted that operating leverage, better revenue mix, as well as productivity improvement measures drove the margins. So overall, a large chunk of the margin improvement is coming in from sustainable measures. But when we look at the order inflows, there are some diverging trends. Siemens reported a decline of 9%, while ABB reported a jump of 15% in the order inflows. In fact, Siemens was impacted by delay in finalization of orders. There was some slowdown in industrial automation products as well. Uh, for ABB, there was some bit of weakness in robotics and discrete automation as well as the motion business. But this was largely offset by order wins in electrification products as well as industrial automation. The company uh, also seems to be insulating itself from large order volatility. So overall, both of these counters on a year-to-date basis have surged. Valuations, ha uh, when we compare it to the two-year average, are definitely trading above it. But when we look at the brokerage view, let me leave you with that. Uh, the, most of the brokerages uh, believe that uh, the margin improvement that the companies have seen is sustainable and therefore they have gone ahead and revised their target price upwards for both of these counters. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for that, uh, Vamakshi. In fact, we spoke with Sunil Mathur, the MD and CEO of Siemens India. Listen into what they had to say. In terms of uh, ordering, so there are two parts. One is the normal projects and standard business is, is doing well overall. We are growing overall. Our first half year has been good. 
if I look at the if at the first half year, we expect to continue to grow healthily uh, for the second half year. Um, the the challenge that we have is only the slowdown in one part of our business, which is in the industrial automation uh, part of our business, which is where we expect that there will be a normalization in the demand starting in the October, December quarter. Our volumes have gone up and with the volumes going up, there is definitely um, an impact, a volume impact appearing in the, in the margins there. In addition to that, there have been cost control measures that the company has gone into, uh, has, has um, uh, carried out, as also other productivity measures in our factories and other areas. Um, in addition, we've had some special earnings because of sale of, uh, of some property and, um, and some dividend that we received. So overall, our intent is to continue to grow the margins as we increase our digital component in the business. Um, uh, there will be an increase in margins as we increase the digitalization um, uh, initiatives that we have launched here in the company. Okay, all right. So that's the word coming from Siemens. Big moves on that stock today. In fact, the entire industrial space has been in focus, right? Uh, after stellar set of earnings coming in from all of them, be it Thermax, be it ABB, and now Siemens as well. Couple of stocks that should be on your radar now because we've seen big moves coming in there. Brigade Enterprises, that stock is up 7% in trade right now. We do have Linde India as well, which is high by 6.5%. Uh, Mastec 2 is up 5%. We have Canada Bank, which is up 4.5%. Remember, there was the split on the stock today, so some corporate action as well going on. Uh, but overall, the markets are down 30 points. Uh, Midcap Index is the one which is outperforming with gains of 7 tenths of a percent, and that is the case for the small cap index as well. Uh, with that, we'll take your leave on this edition of Midcap Radar. But do stay tuned, your stocks when we return.